<laughs> All right, so let's get started because, um, like, again, I don't want to hold you long. So I'm Tuesday, and in the back of me, I don't know if you could really see her. That's Brittany, <laughs> one of my team members. I operate an accounting firm right in central Harlem in New York City. And um, today's, we've done a series of, of topics live on IG, and today's topic is questions to ask a tax, tax preparer um, before hiring them. And why is this important? Because we've heard enough horror stories. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes people come to us and they've had some type of, you know, sometimes traumatic experience with a tax preparer and much of it could have been avoided. So for years there have, there have been people who have prepared taxes and are not really re regulated, right? They decide to do it to moonlight doing it and they don't necessarily have the credentials or the knowledge base that's required to do taxes efficiently. So I'm, I'm going to go over about 10 things you should um, try to address or find out, you know, prior to hiring a tax preparer. The first thing is very basic. Um, do they have a PTIN, what's called a PTIN, P-T-I-N, and that's a preparer's tax ID number that's given to everyone who prepares taxes for compensation that's given by the IRS. So the IRS needs to regulate everyone who prepares taxes and gets paid to do it. So they must have a P-10. I'm not sure how you would approach asking, you know, someone, well, do you have a P-10? I don't know if you can ask it that, you know, blatantly, but you do want to be sure that they have one because that means that they are registered with the IRS. The IRS knows that they prepare taxes and know that they charge money for it. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you want to ask questions as we go along, go ahead and ask questions and I'll try to answer them on the fly as I'm going through the information. So again, a legitimate tax preparer should have a tax ID number. That number goes on your tax return so that there's someone connected to that information on the return should something happen. They need to be able to track down the person that prepared the tax, um, the tax return. Okay, number two. You want to find out um, what, what the preparer's background is in terms of their experience with preparing taxes, obviously, and whether or not they um, have experience with, let's say you're in business, right? Because we work with a lot of business owners and we focus on very specific industries. So if you're in business and you're in a particular industry, you may want to find out from that tax preparer if they have experience with doing tax returns for your particular industry. And this is super important because they could draw on, you know, certain, uh, you know, tax deductions or credits or, you know, other variables that can go on the tax return that can help you. So it's always nice to get a tax preparer who has some experience in your particular industry. Um, and that's mostly for people who are in business. If you're not in business, if you're employed, then it may not matter so much, you know, what that person uh, specializes in, in terms of industries. Okay, next. Um, just, mm -hmm. What about yeah. if someone doesn't have a pizza? Can they prepare your taxes? Right. So the question is, if someone does not have a P-10, can they prepare your taxes? So yes, as a volunteer, you shouldn't be paying them <laughs> because they're not legitimate. Because again, the, the law is the IRS requires anyone who prepares tax returns for compensation to have a P-10. And that needs to be included in your tax return. If you have someone that prepares your taxes that does not have a P-10, then they are just simply helping you out and you're the only person signing your return and they cannot be held responsible for anything. So um, that's that. Uh, do you know the requirements of the state? So one of the things you may um, want to ask 
a tax preparer, especially if you work working remotely with them. Let's say you're using a tax preparer that's not necessarily in your same state, which is okay, right? We, we have clients, you know, in different states across the U.S., so the tax preparer doesn't necessarily have to be in your, your same state, but they should know the local um, laws for that state, generally speaking. And what they don't know, they, they should be capable of researching, obviously. So you want to find out if that tax preparer has experience with doing, you know, other states or out of state, depending on where you live. That would be something important to find out. Um, because if they have no knowledge of the particular rules in that particular state, then you may want to find someone who does. Okay. So, I mean, the idea is you don't have to not use them because they're not in your state. You just want to be sure, feel confident that they have some experience or know something about those local, um, laws. Right. And for instance, there are other tax preparers in other states that don't necessarily know that in New York State, or if you live in New York City, we have three levels of taxation, right? We're taxed by the federal government, we're taxed by New York State, and those of us who live in New York City are taxed on the city level too. Not all states have local taxes. Not all states have state income tax, right? So. Um, you have to be familiar. Your tax preparer has to be familiar with that particular um, location. Okay, next. What records and documentation will you need from me? This is a good question to ask. Um, and you can sort of gauge their experience by how they answer. Most professional tax preparers will have a list and we'll be able to provide you with some type of basic list of the documents that you need to get to them, get to them initially. If they need more documents from you, they'll ask for them, but there are some basic things that we require from you that um, you need to have in order and have prepared to turn over to us. Um, in, and you know, some of those obviously are your W-2 if you're um, employed, your 1099s if you're working independently or you're a business owner. Um, now we all need the 1095 form A, B, or C that confirms that we have health insurance. Um, if you have any type of interest or um, tuition, those are going to come on a, a 1098. If you have unemployment, 1099. Um, and you need your state ID. Right now, we got to get the back and front of your state ID, and um, what else? I think those are the basic um, the basic forms that we need. So you want to ask them in advance what you need to provide them, so that you can have your return prepared in a, a very timely manner. One of the things I got to tell you that's one of the things that holds up the process for us when the our tax clients um, don't have all the paperwork together. And it takes so much longer to get the return completed when the papers are not organized. So please, for the love of God, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, have, to have all your paperwork. They start to come through the mail in the month of January. Most companies have until January 31st to provide you with financial information that you need for your tax return. So if you don't check mail any other month of the year, you have to check all of your mail in January because you are getting important documents that need to go um, on your tax return with information that needs to go on your tax return. So open up every piece of mail, even if it looks like junk mail, open it up, make sure it's not a tax document um, that you need to include, okay? Um, next thing you should ask is, um, how do you determine your fee structure? And I'm not saying ask, how much do you charge? Even though you want to know that, right? You want to know <laughs> how much do you charge? But a better question might be, how do you determine your fee structure? Because, um, you, that's, that's, <clears throat> 
that's just going to give you more, I guess, make you feel more secure in whatever the fee is because you got a better understanding of the quality of service that they're providing. Um, you know, some tax preparers may say, oh, it's, you know, it's a flat fee for everybody. You know, so my fee is X and everybody pays that same amount regardless of um, what their individual situation is. Or some tax preparers might say, well, it depends on the complexity of your return. You know, it's a scale in terms of how much we charge. Um, most tax preparers are going to have a difference um, in their pricing for if you have business activity versus if you're employed and just have, you know, a W-2, a couple of W-2s and your health insurance and, and that's it. So it really, um, it really depends on the tax preparer, right? There's no rules in how much they can charge you, but find out more of what they offer before judging whether or not it's too expensive for you to afford, right? Some tax preparers include an annual review with their tax preparation, you know? Um, and that might be worth something to you, you know, versus the tax preparer that says, look, pay me, you know, $150 and keep it moving. I'll see you next year, <laughs> right? right? You, you know, you get what you pay for. <laughs> All right, so any questions? All right. If you have any questions, don't forget, you can go ahead and ask me. I'm not really sure what the, your friend said, got to go back to WIP. With what? He said, got to go back to WIP, but I think he... Get back to you? <laughs> oh, maybe he said, get back to you. Right. Um, let's see. Can I file electronically? I mean, that's, a, that's almost like a silly question because uh, everybody, the mandate is to file electronically, right? The IRS and all the state agencies require you to file electronically. If someone is filing your tax returns by paper, I would be concerned. <laughs> I would be a little leery. Um, prior year tax returns often need to be filed by paper. This is true. If it's like a couple of years behind and you're doing old, then you cannot um, file them electronically. Um, so that's fine. Um, sometimes amended returns need to be filed by paper. So that's fine. But if this is the initial tax return during the current season and you're ready to file, that tax preparer should be filing it electronically. So if they tell you no, then you should be concerned. Uh, next, you can find out, uh, when will I receive a copy of my return? And the answer should be, oh, immediately, like just after we do it, right? No tax preparer can withhold your tax return for any reason, right? Not even if you didn't pay them. They cannot withhold a copy of your tax return. So, and you need to get it right after it's filed. Now, you should know, though, that once the return is electronically filed through the software, it sometimes takes, a, sometimes it happens in a couple of hours, sometimes it takes 24 hours or so before it's accepted by the tax agencies. So we wait for the IRS and the state to change the status of your tax return to accept it. And then that's when we provide it to you. Because if it's not accepted, if it's rejected for, for any reason, that means something wasn't correct on it. It has to be fixed and then resubmit it. So there's no sense in us giving you a copy of a return that needs to be adjusted. It might be the difference of your middle initial was left off or something like that, or the social security number didn't match. So once it's corrected, submitted, and accept it, then you get a copy of it electronically, okay? And you can get a printed copy of it or you can send it by email. By the way, don't let your tax preparers email you your documents because that has your name, your social security number, and your address on it. And that's a security risk, right? Um, your breach in privacy. Do not have your tax documents emailed to you. They should be, we email hours, but we do it through a secure portal, right? It offers bank level um, encryption so that your information is protected, okay? So you, you don't want 
to work with a tax preparer that's going to simply email you your documents. They should be using some type of portal or secure way of transferring your information to you. Okay. Uh, next, uh, how do I find out? Uh, oh, how do I find you? If I have a question or problem once tax season is over. Okay, so this is a big one, right? Because we know there are a lot of tax preparers that only work during tax season, which is fine. They're, they're totally legitimate. You know, they have a P10. They work for a company that's just a tax company. And maybe that tax company is just around for tax season. That's fine. However, I would warn you against that as well because oftentimes people are left to fend for themselves because that tax preparer is nowhere in sight for the rest of the year you want to work with a tax preparer that's going to be available to you throughout the whole course of the year right because if you end up being audited or they send you a document requesting additional information what do you do right you want the confidence that there's you used a professional tax preparer and they'll be available to help you um, should questions or documents need to be provided to the tax agencies. So that's another important thing. Um, I know it's the standard to use, you know, I'm not necessarily going to call any of the names, but the tax, the tax companies where you could walk down the street and just walk in and have it done. But understand that... <clears throat> Um, th those folks are not going to be around after, after April 17th. Okay. Um, what if I get, what happens if I get audited, right? You want to speak to the tax preparer about that. Will you be available to represent me or will you be able to represent me? All tax preparers cannot represent taxpayers on all things, right? Those who have petens, um, that are uh, like seasonal tax preparers can represent you in a limited way on a tax tax on a tax return that they prepared. So they're limited to the tax return that they prepared. They can help you with that, and they can only help you in a limited capacity. Like they can help you provide more information, answer questions, and so forth. If you need. Um, real representation because now let's say they're holding you accountable for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars or something like that. You may want to seek the advice of an enrolled agent, right? Enrolled agents have licenses to act on your behalf b before the IRS, and it's the IRS that gives them the license to do that. So these folks are very knowledgeable about tax code, and it doesn't matter whether or not they prepared your return. They have the license to prepare you in, in any type of situation, okay? So, but you want, you know, to work with a professional tax preparer that, that can at least help you with the tax return that, that they prepared. And I think that was all of the points. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in. And let me just look. I'm just look to see if I, I missed anything. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about who signs your return, and that goes back to the P10. Anyone that's pre that's preparing your tax return, they have a P10. They're electri electronically file uh, signing your return, and they're supposed to. You are not supposed to have a submitted return without the preparer's information on there, right? So technically, you're both signing it. You are ultimately responsible for that information that's on that return. Understand that. Um, so that's why it's really important who you choose to help you with it um, because you are responsible. So you want them to be knowledgeable of the tax code and point you in the right direction. But um, anyone that's not willing to sign your return, flag, red flag, okay, flag on the field. <laughs> and on a Super Bowl, <laughs> um, um, they, they, no, don't use them if they don't want to sign it. And also, if they're not using um, software to do your return, they're, they're doing your tax return, I guess, by opening up an account 
just for you, like, I don't know, a software account online and doing it like that versus using professional software, um, that might be, you know, another issue too. That might make you realize that they're not investing in their business as a tax preparer and they may or may not be, um, you know, around after the season's over. So I'd be leery of folks who are sort of preparing your taxes inside a tax software that's specifically for you because that means they are doing your return but they get to not sign it that you you know you're the only one responsible and that's their way of getting around the p10 um so i think that's most of my main points i did cover some of this on my youtube channel um it, it talks about questions to ask a tax preparer if you want to be reminded of any of this um, and there's also a really cool tool at irs.gov that you can use to figure out if you even need to file taxes. You know, in some years, you may have a scenario going on where you may not, you know, your income is not such that you have to file. So the IRS has this tool, it's called the ITA, Interactive um, Tax Tool, or something like that, where you go, you answer a few questions, and then it tells you whether or not you have to file for that year. So you can find that out first, and then you can stay at the irs.gov and go to the directory of tax preparers, because they also have a directory of tax preparers who have a P10 to find someone in your area with the credentials that you want, either an enrolled agent, a certified public you know, accountant that does um, tax preparation, or a, a seasonal tax preparer. And you can find them on that list and pick someone really good to work with. And, and the other thing I would advise is creating a relationship with that person and sticking with them. Like once you start with a tax preparer and they're doing really well by you, stay with them. Don't jump around from preparer to preparer because you want that consistency and you want them to have the history. Because with, with our clients... <clears throat> We have, because we have a history with them, when something changes in a year, that triggers questions. Like, we'll notice if the income jumped by $20,000, you know, we'll ask, well, did you, you know, did you pay estimated tax payments or did you put any money in a retirement fund, you know, to try to offset this? It triggers questions. So you want to build a history with your tax preparer rather than, you know, every year just going to somebody else. Okay. And that is all, folks. If there are no more questions, I will bid you adieu. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry. Huh? I didn't. Oh, you don't. Mm -mm. And uh, Yeah, no, we ain't talking about that. No. <laughs> Brittany was suggested that I go into the, the new law changes, and we're not doing that. That'll be another hour on this on this video. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good <laughs> good day. And, uh, you know, catch us. The In my bio is the link tree to connect with us. Otherwise, if you have any additional questions or want to talk specifically about your tax situation, feel free feel free to email me or call the office, you know, anytime. All right now, you're very welcome.